This is Ed Newton. I'm a CPA and certified financial planner and the president of Newton Financial Network. I would like to welcome you to the replay of our February 12, 2016 investment update. Troy Patton is the president of Archer Investments and the portfolio manager for Newton Financial Network and will be providing today's commentary. After you listen to Troy's comments, if you have additional questions, please feel free to give us a call here at Newton Financial Network. Our phone number is 704-552-8689. I'll repeat the information and have a special offer for you at the conclusion of Troy's comments. And now, here's Troy. Good morning. This is Troy Patton. Welcome to the call. Uh, I wanted to give everyone an update here as uh, the markets have been quite turbulent, obviously, uh, so far in 2016. Uh, with another culmination yesterday of the, of the market uh, really retreating, even though today is positive, here on Friday, February 12, 2016. So it's what I wanted to do is I wanted to go through a couple things with everybody, just to uh, not, not necessarily to alleviate people's concerns, but to address some of those concerns as to what the market's doing and, and maybe why it's doing so. And one of the things I, I want to I discuss about the market is – there are certain times when the market is in a trend, and you can't stop that trend. Um, however, there's always there's always some points in that trend um, uh, that that can be stopped, at, uh, or, or there's resistance, and, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But a lot of people always want to know; they want to ask the question about the market. You know, is it sunny? Is it cloudy? I mean, you know, which is it? The truth is, it's usually partly cloudy or partly sunny. Uh, that's usually the market. It's very few times that it's that it's just cloudy and rainy, and just as uh, J.P. Morgan uh, once said uh, in his infinite wisdom, is the rain always stops at some point. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about um, some of the some of the different things that are going on. This is one of the slides that we've talked about before. If some of you read our 2016 outlook uh, back in January, we talked about the S&P earnings growth, and we said it's kind of dead in the water. Uh, and it's very uh, parallel to the 2007-2008 uh, crisis that we had in terms of uh, earnings being very flat. Now, obviously, we see earnings much higher than we did in 2007 and 2008, so we're not back at those levels. Uh, again, I, wanna, I do want to stress that in 2007-2008, uh, housing, home building, and construction completely fell off the cliff. Uh, and, and, and some people might be saying, well, heck, that's what's going on in oil. Actually, it's not. Um, oil and, and the energy sector is uh, having some severe problems. But remember, oil and energy don't make up uh, uh, near the industry that uh, construction, housing, and home building did back in 2007 and 2008. Even, even, combine, even if you combine today the oil industry uh, with you know, our exports to China, because a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, China's in a bubble. It, it, it very well may be. And, and let's say they represent 6 to 8% of our exports. Okay, if it drops one percent, that's still that's still not what's hap what happened back in 2007 and 2008. I really think this is more of a pause in the market uh, before we eventually climb higher. Uh, I will I will say this uh, that uh, as this chart implies, that earnings. Uh, have been very uh, muted, and in fact, we are kind of in what I would consider a no-growth environment. If you take a look at this next chart, and although it's very small, this is the earnings ratio. Uh, I didn't want to blow it up too big. This is something that we do every week here at, at Archer Investment Corporation, and is what I, is what this represents is the the blue uh, bar chart. Uh, forget you can kind of forget the week, but quarter to date, the blue bar chart represents whether um, earnings were uh, higher this quarter than the quarter a year ago, the same quarter. So the first quarter of 2015 to the first quarter of 2016 are earnings higher than they were a year ago. And generally, this uh, the average uh, would run about 1.47 or close to that 1.5 mark. So you can see a year ago, which is the gold chart or yellow chart out to the far right, we were definitely in 2015, in January 2015, over January 2014, our, our earnings were much higher uh, than a year ago, uh, than, than a year ago, a quarter a year ago. I, I'm not really saying that very well. Um, 
but and then and then last uh, uh, or in the last quarter, you can see the red chart um, or the dark red chart. We were running less than we were this quarter. So this quarter, we are starting to rebound. Actually, we're starting to see our earnings are, from what we consider, our earnings are actually coming in a bit better than they did last quarter. That's what we want to see. We want to see some kind of rebound in those earnings. It, w it would alarm us if, if earnings continued to drop and we got below that one level where earnings are actually lower than they were a year ago in the same quarter. Okay. Uh, this next chart, I actually printed this uh, this morning. It's when the S&P was up about 1.08%. It really represents this resistance that I spoke about earlier. And it's what we can see here is um, one of the things uh, that I said in, in a blog, um, uh, you know, that we put out every uh, every once in a while is I said, you know, we have to 90% of the time or, or three out of four times, we will retest the lows. We will always go back and retest those lows. We retest highs. It's Ultimately, we either break through those lows or we don't, or we break through those highs or we don't. In this case, we're looking at uh, the lows and, and whether we're going to retest those lows. And as you can see, we keep retesting those. Today, we're getting a little bit of a bounce back. It doesn't mean the trend uh, downward is broken. It really just means, as you can see, uh, there is going to be time to time that we are going to go up higher. In fact, I would expect uh, some kind of retracement uh, back up uh, another two to three percent if this trend, if this small trend continues. We're actually more concerned about the large trend and what the large trend is in earnings, uh, the economy, and revenues. Because at the end of the day, if you don't if you don't listen to anything else in this call, listen to this one thing. The stock market will follow the earnings and the economy, period. If earnings keep moving higher, the stock market will ultimately move higher. If earnings falter, the stock market will ultimately falter. And at this point in time is what we're saying is the earnings have not faltered at this point. Uh, yes, there are concerns, and, and, and we'll talk about some of those things that can create lower earnings, but at this point they are not here yet, okay? So uh, right now we're, we're testing off this, what they call a double bottom uh, in the S&P 500. And, and as we rebound today, I really, I really fully expected that if, if, today got, if today was worse, that mon or that or the stock market's closed Monday, uh, but then Tuesday would even be worse, uh, that, we would, uh, that we would fall down today and then possibly fall down Tuesday uh, by another couple percent. Um, with that being said, let's just say, for argument's sake, that, that we did, we did, the market did fall, okay? And this is the same chart. This is just the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and as you can see. But let's say we ultimately break through that resistance level, and, and we drop another 10% beyond this. So the market falls 21, 23% uh, so far year to date. I would tell you to put that in a historical context and tell you that at that point. The market is very oversold, very oversold, and it would be an ultimate time that I, that to buy. I would buy with my own money. Uh, I, I would I would advise any client to buy because historically speaking, buying at those levels and those bottom percentiles like that have always historically been a great opportunity to buy. Now, many of you might say, "Well, well, Troy, you know, why don't we sell today?" And then buy back later. You know, once once the market gets going better again, and and is what I would is what I would explain to you is that that really that, that that's like saying that's like saying you know I, I'm gonna the market's dropped ten percent. Let's say you're in a moderate category with us, and let's and this is just hypothetically, but let's say you're the market's down ten percent and you're down six. Okay. So you, 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 you've dropped and, and you're, not hot, you're not real happy about that. And you say, gosh, I want to get out, okay? And let's just go ahead and say that the market drops another 5%. And you, and you start thinking, man, that was great. You know, I, I didn't participate in about 3% of that downturn because I was in a moderate category. I'm, I'm still only down 6%. And, and this is the, the psyche of, of human emotion tells us that, you know, again, we, and, and I've actually seen this in emails from clients that they want to get back in once the market gets better. So then we, they ultimately wait till the market rebounds. Let's say it comes back up 10%. So it's still, it's still down, but 10%, and then they get back in. 
if they do that, they still miss out on a two a two to three percent return of their money because they sat on the sidelines. And there has been study after study done, and Morningstar has talked about this numerous times, how the average investor typically, uh, or not the average, uh, the, most investors underperform the stock market. Even if the market's up 8%, they're generally their returns are over a 10-year period of time, if it averages 8%, is more like 3 or 4%. And the reason is, is because we all want to go outside when it's sunny, but none of us want to go outside when it's cloudy and raining. And the reality is we should go outside when it's ra- raining in the yard, stand out there, and be ready. Then guess what? We're first to act. I get it. We got a little bit wet but we get to enjoy all the sunshine as opposed to just the sunshine maybe at the end of the day, okay? If you go outside when it's 7 at 7 p.m., depending on even on where you live, you just may not get a chance to see all, all the sunlight. But I bet if it's raining in the morning and I went outside and I stood and it ultimately ended, I, I get a, a full day of sunshine, okay? All right, that's in my infinite wisdom there, okay. So I, I just want to re- relay this to the 10-year treasury. A lot of us have, have seen the 10-year treasury, and many people have said, well, you know, bonds are, are, are showing us the way the, the, of the market. You know, that, that may be, because the, but l- let me just explain one thing here. The, the 10-year treasury is also getting near its resistance uh, in the market, and, and 10-year treasury yields, uh, according, with this chart, or, you know, I, I believe it's at 164. That's pretty darn low. Um, you know, I mean, I think we even hit 1.5 maybe the other day. Um, or, or in the one fives, I, I got to tell you, um, you know, I don't think that we're going to break through that resistance on the ten-year treasury and send and and send those rates lower. Now these rates heading lower, you know, it, it might be good for the consumer. It's really bad for the retired folks um, and the banks and insurance companies because not only can they not make money, but then they can't pass along some of those yields uh, to the individuals who are looking for income. Okay. And again, this is just a slide I've had in the past. Corporate cash as a percent of current assets and cash return to shareholders has really continued to be elevated. I re- and I really think this is going to continue because the cor- corporate balance sheets are really pretty solid. At this point in time, you know, we might say, well, gosh, you know, are we are we overvalued? Are we undervalued? You know, where's the market at going forward from a historical perspective? And I would tell you at this point, and this is a court, as of yesterday, and I, I pulled this information off online, is that you know it, typically um, you know we average around 16 times forward earnings. We're about 15.87. It, 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 with with and and this is on you know over interest rates being all over the board. If you can look back, I mean, obviously back into the 80s and 90s, interest rates were much higher. At this environment where uh, interest rates are very low, albeit we have a very no-growth type environment or very slow-growth environment, I really believe that the stock market at this point is a bit undervalued at 15.85 approximately forward earnings. Okay? Um, so many of many of many of you have heard, you know, it's been on the news that you know oil continues to lead uh, the stock market down, and you know gold is rallying, and man, everybody should be buying gold because once again, for heaven's sake, if things go to bust, we need to all be in gold. I, I you know, I can't tell you, I'm I'm the biggest gold bear of all. If you take a look at this, this is gold to oil ratio. This is barrels per ounce. And as you can see, back from 1950, we are now at an all-time high of gold as compared to oil. Well, let me tell you this. You can't put gold in your car and run it. And you can't put – I mean, gold – I don't see anybody trading gold to buy you know milk and bread. Oil is used every day by every economy in the world not gold, okay? So right now, I mean, gold is at an all-time high as to barrels per ounce. Um, so if you feel like you're seeing the market and the market's declining, you say, gosh, you know, I really, ought to buy, I really ought to buy gold. The contrarian in me tells me that because everybody thinks they should be buying gold, now's the time is to buy oil. oil. And, and I think if you have a long-term perspective of, you know, three to five, even ten years, you'll be well rewarded to be going back into those oil stocks, uh, even uh, stocks that, you know, we own like in the Archer Balance Fund like Chevron. Uh, you know, uh, oil stocks such as that uh, I think are going to do very well over the uh, three, five, and ten-year period. 
Okay. Um, I, I also want to mention that there's a, been a lot of talk about jobless claims, and, and, and I do know that, you know, I mean, we can argue all day about the participation rate and then people being underemployed versus, you know, unemployed. But at the end of the day, the one thing that we cannot escape is the initial jobless claims. Uh, and, and these two charts kind of tell a little bit of a tale. And, and is what they are is, is initial claims from January 2007 uh, to February uh, uh, 2016, and then the bottom was 1970 to 2016. Initial claims continue to stay below the 300,000 mark. At the 300,000 mark, I continue to believe that the, that the economy still stays intact and, and that the consumer still has money to spend. And if that's the case, the market will ultimately move higher. Okay? Really simple. A lot of people, uh, this next chart uh, is really the S&P 500. It's an 18-month chart of the S&P 500. Uh, versus what's called the VIX, or what we call the fear index. And we can see that the fear index, uh, it, it, as of yesterday, is starting to run into some resistance at the top level, okay? You can, we can see that. Uh, obviously, in 2007, 2008, th those, uh, amount, those times uh, when the levels get that escalated, clearly it was a good time to buy. And actually, if you go back over, over time, any time the VIX uh, uh, escalates to points that are just beyond the charts or, or you know, well into those resistance, resistance levels, it's been a great time to buy. And it's also showing us, I mean, if you take a look at these two charts, it's, it's very uncanny that they're mirror images of each other. So the S&P 500 has declined as the VIX has climbed. So one declines, one climbs. And right now where the VIX is really up against this resistance, the S&P is up against it, its resistance. So at this point, I would expect the market to bounce at this point, okay? And, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, these last couple charts, I really, you know, I, I just to kind of get through these, um, the whole idea behind this and, and giving this uh, information to you all is to stay invested. There really is not a crystal ball. And as you can see here, that six of the ten best days occurred within two weeks of the ten worst days. So once again, I don't want you to. I don't want you to think that the market uh, may not continue to be volatile because I think it will be. I think we're going to see a lot of gyrations uh, in the market from uh, here, uh, probably until the next quarter, until we can see maybe some reprieve in the U.S. dollar and some of those things, and we continue to see earnings escalate. And once people get comfortable that earnings are going to continue to escalate, and that and that you know the credit quality, um, it, it, pe that uh, the I guess companies that are maybe a little less uh, uh, than credit worthy can borrow money. Um, I, I really, I really think that uh, the market's going to be volatile until that point in time, and and I, and I think that's around the corner. Um, it's very, you know, somebody said to me the other day that you know, so goes January, so goes the year. Yeah, you know, that's true about 50% of the time. So it's very possible that you know we end up with a, you know another negative year here, uh, in or in the market in 2016, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that uh, it's going to be negative. We've had other down years. I mean, if I go back and I even just look into history, and I can say, you know, uh, uh, in, in election years, in presidential election years where January was negative, I can look back to Nixon versus, uh, uh, let's see, Nixon, Humphrey, and Wallace in 1968. That was a year that, that the market um, dropped in January, and it was ultimately higher. I can even go to January and February being negative in Ronald Reagan versus Mondale in 1984. That's another year, okay? I mean, th those, are, those are good examples that when the, the market declined in January, and, you know, I mean, again, we can go further back to Roosevelt versus Wilkie in 1940. I mean, Truman versus Dewey in 1948. You know, these, there are often times there are years that, are, that the market's negative, and it, it, the, mar the market may end the year negative, but it may not, uh, just like, uh, you know, when we were talking about some of those uh, other times, you know, Nixon and Humphrey, okay? So I would say about 50% of the time it's negative, 50% it's not. But ultimately, we, I, I, I would challenge each investor to do this. Check your goals. If your goals are moderate, and, they, and they're still moderate, and your goals are still intact, then I would stay invested. You haven't, 
you know, somebody uh, said the other day uh, when I was out in Colorado talking to somebody, and 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 they said, you know, hey, are you going to pull your money out of the market? And he said, no. If I pull it out, that means I lost my money. I'm going to leave it in. And the and the United States once again is undefeated in comebacks. And we think this time is no different. We just think this is a pause. Again, nobody has a crystal ball. But, you know, when people start thinking the market's too volatile or a lot of people start calling and saying, gosh, I want to move to cash, the contrarian, contrarian enemy tells me that's probably the time to buy because most individual investors, we, 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 we react on human emotion and not on the, the empirical data that we have. And that's what I wanted to show you here with a lot of these charts is that empirical data um, that um, we think is important that will drive the markets higher. So just remember this. Yes, the markets do go up and down. The, I mean, anybody, that, if you think you're going to invest in the stock market and it's going to, it's going to be all roses and, and flower blooms every single day, it's not. Sometimes we're going to have a little bit of frost. Sometimes we're going to have a hard winter. We're, but guess what? The snow has melted every year, and spring will arise. There will be buds on the trees, and, and we'll all be outside once again in the warm weather. And, and, it, and probably even some sunny days ahead, okay? All right, with that being said, if anybody has any questions, feel free to call your investment advisor representative or call uh, here in the office. You can always reach us at 1-800-800-1776. I'm more than happy to talk to you. Or feel free to email me, tpatton, P-A-T-T-O-N, at thearcherfunds.com. Or like I said, you can talk to your investment advisor representative. I'm sure they're more than happy to get with you as well. Uh, for those of you who haven't done a uh, risk analysis with us, uh, you know, if you feel like this is too, it's a little too volatile for you, you know, one good exercise to do is to go out to archerinvestment.com and, and, and take a risk analysis test and see kind of where you fit in. And then you'll, we, that way we can match a portfolio to meet your risk uh, needs or, or, your, or your risk levels that you're willing to take in the market. Okay, with that being said, I appreciate everybody being here, and we'll try to get another update uh, probably at the end of March. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Ed Newton again. After listening to Troy's market update, you may be concerned or even curious whether your portfolio is structured or allocated properly for your own personal risk tolerance for investing. I invite you to let me give you a free, no obligation, second opinion on your portfolio. The second opinion is an analysis of your portfolio based on how much risk you're willing to take as an investor to see how you should be allocated across the different asset classes that are available. The first step to get started is to give us a call at 704-552-8689 and ask for Kristen. She'll be happy to set up a time for us to get together so that we can give your portfolio a review and give you our conclusions. This is Ed Newton. CPA and CFP for the Newton Financial Network. I hope to talk with you soon. We'll see you next month.